Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Mask of the Betrayer. Last episode, we did some more running around and exploring a bit, including investigating a couple rooms and buildings and the like that were outside. It, it kind of worked out, got a couple of quests, kind of, sort of, could be interesting. And we also made our way back into here where we were actually able to put all the uh, spirits in the furnace here to rest. From there we managed to get a key that we can use to get into the vault itself, which we shall do now. I am very curious what is inside. Let's find out. Oh boy, there's a lot here. Including a lot of urns. Well, we can loot them. Shadows of the Lord. Ah, yes, taking the offerings from these offerings from the offering urns here. Okay, that one's dealt with. leveled up. Didn't see that coming. Alright, level in fighter. Put a point in dexterity. Sure. Diplomacy, intimidate, lore. Yep. And that's it. No feats. Well, we got a few things. Okay. Loot these remains. But on this side, more offering urns to loot. I mean, at least we're getting a lot of coin from it. level up for one of our companions. Sure, let's level him up. Alright, Sophia, you leveled up. Wizard, standard. What are you getting? Oh, now you're an epic character! Silent spell? I don't care about. A 
let's see. Epic spell focus on transmutation. Spell penetration. Epic prowess, armor skin. Mass foul. An epic spell. The spell transforms all hostile creatures of medium size or smaller in the area into chickens. Okay. Transformation is permanent. Or vampiric feast. When this spell is cast, you drink in the life force of all creature enemies in the area of effect. Creatures who succeeded a fortitude save lose only half their remaining hit points, while those who fail their saving throw lose all their remaining hit points and are instantly slain. The total amount of damage done by this spell is then added to the caster's hit point total. Moreover, the life force of slain creatures coalesces as a greater shadow, which will attack any surviving enemies. You are only able to absorb sufficient hit points to return you to full health. Any remaining life force dissipates into the fabric of the weave. Oh, that is good! You are taking that. And you want more spells. I guess Whale of the Banshee could prove useful. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to grab? You have Lesser Missile Storm, which is good. Level 5... I don't need lesser spell mantle. Greater magic to spell. It's worth it to have a dispel. Yes. And as for you, cleric, standard, you're not epic yet. Yes. Good to know. All right. To the next offering urn. <laughs> We're gonna loot everything in here before we rest. You probably could have done that at a different time, maybe when we had more here, but hey, you were able to cast it. We are not able to hit these very much, are we? Almost. There we go. We really don't need to loot all of these, but I am anyway. Oh, there's some big there. I mean, I could do eternal rest. I know, it's incredibly disrespectful to be looting this temple, but come on! The god here is dead. Doesn't really matter. Caitlin, why are you not fighting? And there goes Sophia again. Come on, finish it. Hey, Oku leveled up. Excellent. All right, Oku, what did you get? I have no... Oh, wait. Epic weapon specialization for creature. Okay, that's good. And you have fire energy resistance, which is pretty good. Yes. Okay. Next, these two offering urns. To the death! And it immediately went for Sophia. Of course it did. Oh, 
Chet and Caitlyn just bash it. Next, they will die by my hand. Got the third quarter. Off screen after I finish this episode, I am very much going to try and look up what spells in the like are done in order to improve our weapons. So I feel like we should at some point. Well, weapons and armor, anyway. Finish it, please. Thank you. All right, just a few more. Yeah, you really didn't need to, Sophia. I know, I know, this is incredibly entertaining and interesting to watch, isn't it? I will rest soon. Once we finish looting these offerings. You can't even see these shadows. Almost. On what was there? We go. And now for these two. I have actually taken a lot of damage now I look at this. Yeah, of course. Do try and finish this one off. You know what? Drink one of these, please. Enemies just ahead. Ready or what? Come on, finish it. Alright, one more. Then we'll get a rest. Which I'm pretty sure we desperately need. I, ha I have to rotate it because I'm just constantly hearing Caitlyn in my left ear and it's getting, getting annoying. Almost. Excellent. All right. Now yes. you. No, nope, not that. You can put out some more spells. Let's see. Mass cure light wounds. Mass cure serious wounds, and I guess another mass heal would actually be good. And yes. you. Really, you can get another spell in two. I should have gotten level two spells. All right. 
Magic Missile Empowered. Level 3. I guess throw in another slow. Level 6. Throw in a Dispel. Level 7. Get a mass hold person in there. And that's it. Yes. Alright. Now, we need a rest here, if you don't mind. Been ambushed by enemies and must defend yourself. I got knocked down. This is bad. I die. That's bad. Please finish them off. Thank you. Okay, now we need to do the rest again. Nope, not that. Please try and recover all of your health. Good. We lost a lot. Hopefully there's a lot more spirits that we can consume that we can sit, lay to rest. Why is your con decreased? Your command? Yes. You must be cursed something. Uh, can you throw a lesser restoration on her? Thank yes. you. And yes. get Kaji out. All in. Not really happy about what happened, but let's see if we can unlock these doors before we go for through the obviously open one. Indeed, we can. Just get them unlocked. Fall in. All right, let's start with this one. Why don't we? Ow! Didn't see that trap coming. And what's in the c down the center path? Another trap. And another path. All right. Let's start going down this way. Oh, crap! That's unexpected. Oh, crap. A whole ton of vampires. Very much unexpected. And they just completely decimated us. Okay, I'm going to reload. I'll be honest, I'm starting to think we're here before what he should be. Let's just go down this path. The archives door. Sure, that sounds, uh, interesting. Let's take a look at what's in the archives. And it's trapped, but we can see the trap. So I'm pretty sure maybe this way we can go. Let's not go the other ways yet. All in. Critical failure. Nice. This one's Ori fine. mummified priest. Alright, let's lower it down as much as we can, and then we'll do internal rest. It should work. Nope, not yet. Hurt it a little more. There, that should be enough. Now, I think if you use Eternal Rest, it's survived. Wasn't enough. But we were able to use it. Got a lot in these archives here. Tome of Faith. We picked it up. Got a couple scrolls. Let's see. This massive bookcase is filled with ancient but well maintained tomes of assorted subjects, ranging from necromancy to effective torturing techniques to analysis of the finer points of Merkelite dogma. Unfortunately, there seems to be an elemental barrier in place that prevents any of the books from being removed from their shelves. Well, at least there's a few scrolls and the like just laying around.
And we have the Lamentations of the Dead here. Alright, let's investigate. First, Tome of Profane Rebirth. This book appears to contain step-by-step -step instructions for becoming a lich. The instructions seem so simple that you surmise even a novice might execute them with success. The cover of the tome is extremely weathered due to being left for centuries outside the protective bookcase and bookshelves in the archives of Death God's Vault. Despite this, or perhaps due to some dark enchantment, the book contents are largely intact. And Lamentations of the Dead. These scrolls appear to have been written by Merkulite priests centuries ago. They record the fates of many who oppose the former god of the dead, and they were probably read aloud to encourage fear of Merkul and his faithful. At one time, there must have been many of these scrolls, but this one has decayed considerably, and much of it is missing. A prominent passage records the fate of a traitorous high priest. Know that all who follow the Lord of Bones shall face tests of faith. Not even his most favored are spared, as we are taught by the tale of Akachi the Betrayer. As a child, Akachi was offered as a sacrifice to the church. Along with his brother, he was left unnamed upon our temple threshold, as was the custom in that time. Akachi was thus favored by our god, and named in the tradition of the Eastern Church, as are all those who come as babes into the faith of the dead. Indeed, he showed an uncanny faith as a boy. No poison or disease would touch him, and when the Black Whisper ravaged Molsentir, he alone walked amongst the sick, hauled their corpses, and dug their graves unharmed. He offered salvation to those who would embrace the Lord of Bones, and it is said that those who converted to Merkel's faith were healed. Each night, Akachi would return to the temple and entreat his fellow priests to join him in ministering to the dying, but all refused except for Akachi's brother, Aveshi. They remained hiding in the temple, fearful of the plague. So Merkel permitted the Whisper to enter his church, carried upon the robes of the two young brothers, and all his cowering priests died coughing and rasping in their beds. Only Akachi and Aveshi survived, and the boy Akachi was anointed high priest of the Molsentir temple. When the plague had passed, hundreds converted to Merkel's faith, inspired by Akachi's courage and divine favor. While Aveshi ministered to the faithful, Akachi walked the surrounding lands and converted hundreds more souls to the Lord of Bones. Merkul's eye was upon him, and our god would visit Akachi in his dreams, instructing him in the highest mysteries of the faith, and entrusting him with missions to destroy his enemies. Akachi became the hand of Merkul's justice, hunting the foes of our god across the plains. No slight against the Lord of Bones went unpunished, no betrayal went unavenged, and no honor was denied Akachi in return. In his hand he bore a silver blade, taken from the depths of the hells at Merkul's bidding, and granted to him as a reward. Akachi was chosen of Merkul, favored above all. But with such favor come the greatest tests. Akachi's lover was a wizardess who cared little for the gods. One day her enchantments went awry, and she was killed in a magical conflagration. Then was Akachi distraught, for he knew what awaited his beloved. All those who died without faith were bound into the wall of the faithless, and finally dissolved into the substance of the wall. Akachi entreated Merkul to spare his lover. For this he would pay any price, perform any service Merkul might desire. But Merkul's judgment is swift and sure, and it does not waver for those who deny the gods. Akachi's lover would remain in the wall. In that moment, Akachi's pride outshone his faith. His anger turned to wrath, and he swore that he would tear down the wall itself to take his lover back. And by this sinful vow, he was doomed, and became the betrayer. Akachi spoke wicked lies to his brother Aveshi, and turned him against Merkul. By his devotion to his brother, Aveshi was also doomed. Aveshi set aside his name, and he took a new name that was given to him by his brother, as a token of his own betrayal. And Akachi spoke lies to others as well, turning many faithful against the Lord of Bones. He opened the prison of Merkul's vault, and called forth the Demi-Lich Ramak, who had thrice attempted to become a god, and had been thwarted by Akachi himself. The betrayer made pacts with many others as well, promising them great rewards when the Wall of the Faithless was overthrown. Among these were Zoab, a prince of Celestia, and Seiryu, a queen of dragonkind. When he had assembled a mighty host, Akachi carved a doorway between the Plain of Shadow and the Realm of the Dead, and he led his army into Merkul's realm. 
In that hour, Merkul appeared in his glory at the head of an even greater host. All the heroes of the ancient dead marched at his back, with all the masses of the false, and many Batezu who had been summoned from the hells. Akachi's army crumbled before the Lord of Bones, and his generals fled to the darkest corners of the plains. Not even the betrayer could stand against Merkul in the realm of the dead. Akachi was dragged in chains to the Basilica of Lost Hope, and Merkul pronounced judgment upon him. Be watchful, O faithful of the Lord of Bones, for it is said that Akachi's generals still live, and that they promise to return should the betrayer ever stand before death's gates again. And it is also whispered that Akachi tore the soul of his lover from the wall before Merkul struck him down. If the sacrilege is true, then she shall be hunted, and find no rest in this world, for the faithless must be held to account, and none may challenge the judgment of the Lord of Bones. So that's the tale of the betrayer. That is actually very interesting. Now we know his full story. Bard, sorcerer, wizard. Cleric, sorcerer, wizard. Eh, give it to the cleric. She doesn't have much. Okay then. Now we know. Let's take a look down this path, see what's in it. So there does appear to be something down here. Something big. Sarcophagi and... Oh boy. More vampire ancients. This is gonna be rough. And they're already fighting us. And a death lord. Oh, that looks very bad. And I appear to be dazed. I don't care for that. Not at all. There's a Lich King back there! Oh, I wish I had men I had saved before I did this. Okay, the Death Lord is dead. Okay. Work on the Hori Mummified Priest. If we can get it low enough, I'll be able to siphon it and set it to eternal rest. Ah, damn it. And I'm paralyzed. Okay, that was effective, but it's not what I wanted. Can I drain the death? And I'm dead. Crap! We should have saved! Oku is almost dead. You are getting some good spells out, however. Thank you for that. Very much. The Lich King! The Lich King! Yes! Can we... The Lich, King. the Lich King is still alive. I want you to use this on him. And it died. Son of a bitch! Oh wait, I'm full spirit energy. I guess I got it. Okay. That didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped. But it went. And we got a Shroud of Elder Doom out of it. What is that? A pristine spirit essence. Nice. Crowd of the Elder Doom. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're confused. Fine. Kill him, at least. There we go. He'll be fine. Intimidating in size and shape both, cloaks of this nature were only worn by the highest in the Merkelite clergy, those known by the grim honorific of Elder Doom. Since Merkel's death, few of these have managed to make it to the outside world and slip out of the former Death God's grasp. Surprising, since many Elder Dooms supposedly burned themselves alive in their own robes, unwilling to let themselves or their artifacts touch the hands of the unworthy. Immunity to death magic and finger of death. Yes. Okay. You can't cast those spells. 
Okay, no spirits come out of these sarcophagi. We can just loot them all. Good. Let's do so. At least it's loot. Coming to the end of this episode. But we need to investigate what is back here. Then we'll end it. This episode's probably going to go a little longer. Nope, nope, nope. We're getting a lot of loot and spirit essences out of all of this. The Betrayer's Gate. That's curious. A terrible wrongness hangs in the air. A sense that this gate should not be. Though it is nearly the twin of the gate on the upper level of the vault, the markings are different and powerfully alive. The keyhole is the same, though thin vertical opening of identical size. As you look upon the door, the presence within you rise and contorts. There is no pain. Rather, you feel excitement, a yearning to pass through the door. Kaelin, do you know this gate? This gate is what I have been seeking. If only I could have found this door, opened it, the Second Crusade might have had a chance at life. Akachi created this portal to bridge our world and the realm of the dead. It was to be the road on which his armies would march on the City of Judgment. Those runes are similar to the ones on the other door. Can you read them, Sophia? These are divine runes, and if I'm sensing them correctly, they're charged with magic of movement and unmaking. I would be very, very careful with this gate. Lay your hand upon the door. The presence surges, shrieking in your ears, screaming its exultion exultation. Beneath your hand, the gate is alive, somehow aware of you, filled with memory. Betrayer. The word is both a curse and a roar of acclaim. It surges through your mind, repeating again and again, until the voices multiply, and there are many, laughing, shouting, screeching a name. Betrayer. Betrayer. Akachi the Betrayer. The voices are all around you. Mortals, angels, demons, and the forsaken dead. They are in the chamber. They are surging forward through the betrayer's gate. They are surging forward, and the gate is closing, and the voices fade, and the room is empty once more. Leave the door alone. So this is what is present within the dead god's vault. While there are still two other doors that we could go through, it seems like we are here too soon. There's a lot to see in here, and a lot to deal with, but we are not going to. For now, we shall leave. We have had enough in here, I think. And we need to rest. So let's get out of here. <sighs> enough has been done. I think we'll head south. Take the southern portal. Well, there's an open door there. You know what? What the hell? We should investigate that door. First, kill that greater shadow. Let this episode go a little longer. I doubt there's much in this one. Let's see what's in here. Alright, into this open home we go. There's a whole bunch of scrolls. Hi, Larry's Re Revenge List. This scroll contains a detailed list of names with mortifying details and gruesome deaths next to them. There appear to be crude stick drawings enveloping most of the parchment. These drawings seem to show in great detail some of the deaths listed next to the names. Some of the key names appear to be heavily underlined, but one entry really stands out from the rest. Varovin. He is the root of this pain, I feel, and I will exact my revenge on him first. I will slowly bleed him. No, I will smash his face with... No, I will yank out his... This seems to go on for quite some time. Small, ornate box. Okay. You see a desiccated shell that was once a man. Come back later. And a couple death knights. Much watch, ma must watch master. 
This tome, which is adorned with small animal bones over its leathery surface, seems to discuss many necromantic rituals. You see three entries which appear to be marked for further use. The first entry describes how to prepare a vessel for use as something called a phylactery. Apparently, a phylactery is used to house a soul for eternity. These phylacteries can be used in a rite to cheat death and live forever. The second entry describes in great detail a ritual that was referred to in the first marked entry. This ceremony appears very complicated, and it is stressed that only the most accomplished spellcasters should even consider replicating it. Surprisingly, this third entry describes a way to free a soul trapped in a phylactery. Not surprisingly, this requires a destruction of the phylactery. Destroying the phylactery will allow the natural order to take its course and the soul to move beyond its final resting place. Smash a twisted body's head with your boot heel, try to complete the wizard's ritual. Use the alternate ritual found in the Book of Necromantic Lore to release this man's soul from the phylactery. Wait, I'm familiar with rituals that are similar to this one. Do you truly want to attempt this alone? No, I'd rather you complete the ritual if you're willing. Freeing his soul from the phylactery shouldn't be dangerous. This will only take a moment. Let Sophia complete it. Master has passed beyond. And we got a talisman of pure good. Bonus to charisma and wisdom, only usable by good. Spell resistance, 12. Hmm. You know what? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's useful, mm -hmm. but... I mean, it's yes. interesting, but... I don't think we really need yes. it. Oh, of course. Summon creature seven. Give it to the cleric. Your command. Okay. That said, that appears to be everything here. Oh, wait. Small chest. No, no, no. Don't use it. Yes. Kaji? Let's see what's in this chest. Fall in. Success not possible. Come on. Yes. Yes. Hold on a second. I think. Oh, I never gave those. Ah, you don't have it. Damn it. We can't. Yes. Fine then. Bash it. Oh, we can't? We can't get in there. Son of a bitch. Hey, what's this book? This tattered, bloodstained tome appears to be the journal of a former Vrimyoni. Most of the entries appear to ramble on about exacting revenge on his arrogant Vrimyoni brothers, but a few select passages catch your eye. Fifteenth of Myrtle. I have finally done it! I was able to animate a corpse and breathe life back into it. Well, it was the corpse of a diseased rat, which seems to be everywhere in this cave, but it was a corpse nonetheless. Unfortunately, I cannot let anyone see my creation, lest I be cast off from here, or worse. I guess I'll have to dispose of him. 25th of Myrtle. I think I saw Varavin going through my things this morning. I can't be sure of what he has seen. I need to be much more cautious in hiding my forbidden tomes of necromantic lore. I must go speak with Varavin and see what he knows. 25th of Myrtle. Varavin dodged all of my questions regarding his activities this morning. I cannot take the chance that he has seen any of my forbidden codices. I would eliminate him, but that would only cause an investigation. Leaving is the only option. Leaving this cave means leaving all of Rashomon, abandoning all I love. No matter, it must be done. Third of Kythorn. Damn the old ones. They never taught me anything of survival in the wilderness. This morning's attempt to catch a meal went horribly. All of nature's creatures seem to recoil from me. I wonder if they can sense some sort of taint upon me. Oh, what I wouldn't give for some of Jaren's rabbit stew. Those carrots were so tender and... I need to stop this nonsense and find a town that I can take refuge in. Eleventh of Ka Kythorn. Off in the distance I see large walls. Even in my weakened state, I think I can make it there before nightfall. I must make it there before nightfall. Seventh of Flame Rule. Molson tier. I had no idea I had walked that far. I have been in my new abode for several weeks now. Oh, I love it here in this dank, dark, abandoned cellar. Only there were more disease if only there were more disease ridden vermin, it would be just like I was back in the caves of the other Vermyani. I live like a peasant now. I had to beg for food when I first made it to this place. Beg I'll make them pay for what they have subjected me to. Ninth of Elaint. 
How I think about slowly snuffing out the life of every one of these arrogant Vermioni. I think constantly about how I was ejected from my life just because I sought to master all forms of magic. It will take many lifetimes to exact all of the revenge I had planned for them. Many lifetimes. That gives me an idea. 23rd of Uktar. I have figured out a way to cheat Kelimvor. This will take much time and lots of resources, but it will be worth it to see the agony and hear the screams of my brothers. I must find a suitable vessel for my soul. Also, one of my texts mentions a tome of profane rebirth. I must find it. First of Nighthall. Luck upon luck! I have found the general location of this tome of profane rebirth. It resides on the plane of shadow. Not only that, but from my preliminary reading, it appears that Molson here is a perfect place to enter the plane of shadow. The way to cross planes is through the temple to the death god. Fourteenth of Chess. Rubbish! So close to my goal, only to be stopped by an impassable barrier. After making it to the Plane of Shadows, I have learned that the tome I need is in the Death God's Vault. I refuse to go in there, even for this. It matters not. I will proceed with the ritual here on this Shadow Plane. Now to summon some servants to watch over me. The entries past this point are too blood-soaked to read. I am guessing those two killed him. It sucks that we can't get in. Get into that chest, but oh well. That said, I am going to have to end this episode here because it has gone on long enough. We're going to head back to uh, back to the main realm. I'm going to sell some of these items. And then I am going to end the episode. Oh, Dreadwraith. Ooh, can I... That works. Thank you. Now we're at full energy. No, just enter the portal and leave. I don't care about that one. Excellent. Now we'll be able to rest, we can sell these items, and we're good. Yes, I imagine it would. But yes, I believe that is going to be the end of this episode. You are going to sell... Okay, that is isn't going to stay over here. Oh, I would love to be able to combine all those, but you are going to sell the Shroud of Elder Doom. And the Talisman appear good. I'm going to hold on to that... Oh, yeah, for the moment. Just because it might be useful for our companion. And next episode, we're going to do a little bit of talking before we finish up. But that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I'm Chester44. That is... Travis Ignam, Sophia, Kaylin the Dove, Kaji, Oku, and Gan. This has been a Let's Play of Mask of the Betrayer. And I shall see you all next time.